It was at the lowest point in my photographic career that my wife finally took me to one side and showed me the importance of having structure and goals in my photography. I'd been feeling increasingly frustrated with everything to do with photography. And, and just to get out of the house, I said, look, let's just go to our favorite restaurant. And we were sitting there amongst the hubbub of everybody enjoying their dinners. And, and I was absent-mindedly, you know, just toying with my fries because the thoughts were still lingering. They hadn't been left at home. They were still stuck in my head about how I was frustrated that I wasn't making any progress in my photographs. That despite, you know, having at that point like 20 years worth of experience and, and you know, running a student, all these sort of things, that I just felt mired in a place where my work seemed to be going backwards, that I was becoming a rubbish photographer. And I turned to Shana and I said, you know, why do I not seem to get anywhere? That, I, that no matter what I take, it's just, it's rubbish. You know, the photographs are not good at all. So she turns to me and she says, Alex, I don't think that you really want to be the photographer that you believe you can be. And I was like, wait, 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 what? what? She says, because if you did, you would do something about it. You would put a system in place, but you don't. All you do is chase around from fad to fad to fad. You do arbitrary things that just confuse you. So unless you want to spend the rest of your photographic career doing nothing, just chasing your tail, then don't bother with the system. But if you really want to get back to that passion that you felt for photography when I first met you, you need to have a goal and you need to work at it. Having a specific goal in place is what so many photographers on YouTube, I think, are, are missing a trick. They're filling our heads full of, not mumbo jumbo, but fluff, confusing bits here and there. You know, here's all the composition, here's all this, and here's that. And they don't talk about specific goals. Through the whole of the rest of this year, whenever you are watching it, approach photography with a specific goal and find the bits that you need to put together on that journey towards the goal. So Shana had been talking about you know, having a goal, something that is tangible that you can work towards. And in my case, I wanted to create a body of work that I was really proud of, that maybe I could show in a gallery or you know something like that. Now your goals and your systems and stuff may be different. Right? There are many people here on the channel who, when I ask them about you know, I, what they want to achieve, have said some very interesting things. You know, one person said that they want to create less fluff and more kind of meaningful work. Okay, so their goal might be to define what meaningful is. Now there's another example of a photographer I'm currently mentoring and they have a great example of a specific goal. They want to, in their camera club, there are three sort of tiers of judging, and they're currently in the sort of the bottom tier, and they want to move up to the next tier. Now to do that, they need to get certain averages in their scores during the, the judging. So how are we going to help him achieve this? So the first thing to do is think about, in your own thing, you know, ask yourself two questions. One, has something in the past worked for you when you've been trying to achieve a similar goal? And then the second is, has something in the past worked for somebody else when they're achieving a similar sort of goal? So in this case, we've got the man, you know, in his camera club and we can see all his scores and we can see what scores well and what doesn't score well. When he has wanted to improve his photographs and get higher scores, he has taken these kind of photographs. In his case, a lot of them are sort of abstract flower images. Okay, so that, that's worked for him in the past, right? What works for other people? Now again, we have the beauty of being able to see everybody else's images and, you know, their scores and, and what have you. And you can look at them and say, well, why does this particular image score very well? Right, so you've got two people 
who, who two avenues that we can use as ideas and strategies to improving that photography, achieving that goal. I'm well aware that a lot of you, you know, obviously this is just a hobby. You know, photography is something you do for fun and, and it has to be balanced with all the other demands on your time and, and what have you. So rather than saying to you, look, you need to commit to a 365 day project or something that is gonna really kind of end up feeling just more like a chore, we're gonna break down how we're gonna devote your time to doing the photography that's gonna move you towards achieving this goal. And we're gonna take a lesson from Atomic Habits. Now, I love these, these, you know, these business books that talk about you know, how to approach various things in life because they can be applied to so many things. And, and I thought this is a great way of actually applying a structured progression in photography so we can see a result, I see an improvement. We're gonna take the 10, 30, 100, principle. I'm going to apply it to photography. So the first thing he's going to do is for 10 days, you're going to do one thing that moves you towards your goal. So if this photographer's goal was to you know, get better marks, and we've established that in the past when he's done the, you know, the abstract photographs of, of flowers, that those have those have done pretty well, that's what he's quite good at. We can spend 10 days taking a photograph of a flower in an abstract way every, you know, time. That sounds a bit weird where I say I'm gonna do it, but take a photograph of an abstract flower every single day for 10 days. Now, if you miss a day, you have to go all the way back to the beginning, right? This is more, not about making action improvements, but seeing if you have the commitment to make this change. It's important that we are committed to the process of achieving the goal that we have set ourselves. Now, after he's done this for 10 days, he goes, wow, okay, cool. Like I'm seeing a little bit of improvement, but not a huge amount, but he has proven to himself that he is committed to this process. And that's great because his brain is starting to change a little bit. You know, that he's starting to be rewarded for doing these little habits every single day. Now. The next 30 days, he's gonna do the same again, the same thing every single day, a picture of a flower in an abstract way. And this is where you do start to see a little bit of improvement that you will over that course of the, those 40 days, start recognizing that, you know what? You're actually tapping into something here. And this is why it's so important that you don't delete photographs, that you keep everything you take in one folder so you can go from the oldest photograph to the newest one and see the change. Now you don't have to commit 100% to taking photographs every single day for 40 days, but you do need to not have time where you just leave it, right? One, or two, one day here or there, it's okay. Then, of course, you can guess what's happening. We're going to do a hundred days, a hundred days of photographs every single day, right? Now, of course, at this point, okay, look, a hundred days, that's a big commitment, right? Nobody expects somebody to do something every single day for a hundred days. Well, apart from maybe brush their teeth or something like that, but try and commit to it as much as is possible. And at the end of this 140 day period that you have now been working on you know, these abstract flowers or photographs or whatever it is that, that works for you to get to your goal, you're going to see a radical improvement in your photography. When I started taking photographs specifically in the same style, the first ones, yeah, they're a little bit, yeah, they're not quite right. There's bits in there that aren't really working and they got ditched later on. And that's kind of the thing. This changes your approach. You might go halfway through and go, this approach isn't quite working. It's not getting me where I want to get to. Then change it. Change the approach. The goal stays the same, but try a different approach. Try coming at it from a different angle. It may be that photographing abstract flowers every single day for 40 days, it doesn't really, at the end, it's, it's a bit of a dead end the photography will have improved, but it's not quite getting where 
He wants to get. So maybe he'll go, well, okay, I'm going to take a leaf from other photography. I'm going to find, you know, things. So every day for 10 days, I'm going to try and find photographers who inspire me with their average, average, <laughs> look at me, average, the abstract photograph. And make a collection of images that inspire and, and prompt ideas for me to change. Those, these are wonderful approaches. It is important that throughout this whole process that you take the time to reward yourself with the you know, little stages along there. It can be whatever you decide, but something that you is like a pat on the back for you. You know, maybe you treat yourself to a, a new book or maybe a fancy dinner or something that is like a little, yay me. You know, this is, this, we, it, it's easy to become so serious in photography, isn't it? Oh, you know, I'm gonna just sit there and I'm gonna be very earnest. And you know, sort of, and do you know what? Sometimes it's like, yeah, I'm really proud of this. This is cool. I've done something that I, I so much enjoy, you know, whatever it is that works for you, just keep the focus that this should be fun. And above all, you need to be brave. I mentioned having courage earlier to stop caring about what other people think. And if you'd like to find out more about how this is a vital skill in growing as a photographer, then check out this video over here. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon.